Well, we're starting a new series today. Uh, it's called Blessed. How many of you like to be blessed? Yeah, absolutely. I love to be blessed. Everybody loves to be blessed. So um, through this series this May, we're going to skip next Sunday because it's Mother's Day and we have to celebrate mothers because mom do a lot for us. So next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating our moms. Uh, I'm going to be praying for them and blessing them. Uh, but today we're starting off our series and then following uh, next Sunday we're going to finish out uh, the other two series. So as we go into um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 through 6. If you go there with me. So Apostle Paul is writing this to Timothy and he says, Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. And an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Um, so I thought it would be fitting to talk a little bit about um, being blessed. And uh, all of you kind of at one point or another saw a bumper sticker. You're driving around and you see a bumper sticker either on a rear window or on a bumper itself. It says blessed, right? Meaning they want you to know that, hey, I got it all figured out. I'm good. The favor of the Lord is upon me. Life is smooth. So I'm not sure what you're going through. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm with God. And we get these messages, especially if we follow social media with our friends. Nobody posted a, posts a, a message saying, hey, I just got in a fight with my wife. Pray for me. Like, you're not going to, you're not, not going to see that type of post, right? You're going to see something that is, life is amazing. I'm great. Life's good. I'm an overcomer. And you're going to be kind of uh, overwhelmed with those type of messages. But what do you do when things are not going your way? What do you do when you're going through some form of struggle when you're going from some form of um, maybe uncomfortable situation that you're not sure how to navigate. So in this series I want to talk about three myths. So today I want to address one myth and then the following two Sundays I want to address two other myths that following Jesus Christ um, especially here at the Western culture in the United States, maybe Canada, kind of this Western culture, there's this idea or a belief that following Jesus Christ uh, is sort of like, um, you know, going to Disneyland. And, hey, why aren't you serving Jesus? It's great. It's amazing. But we don't share with unbelievers when we cry. We don't share with them the struggles that we go through, temptations that we go through. And I think we should speak into that so that we have the full gospel. Amen? Yes, so... Uh, Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy and one of the myths that I would like to address is being follower of Jesus Christ is easy. Okay, So being follower of Jesus Christ is easy. Um, I want to jump right into um, sharing with you history of apostles of Jesus Christ. So we know there were 12 apostles um, and each one of them had a journey that they went through. There were pillars in the kingdom of God. We refer to them, we look at their history, what they have done in life, and we kind of look up to them. So what I want to do is I want to look at what happened to apostles. How did they live their life and what did they encounter in their everyday living? Um, and especially kind of through these first few slides, I want to show you how they ended. I don't know where I got this, but somewhere I got this idea that the more Christian I become, the more time I spend with the Lord, the smoother my life would be. The more anointed I am, the more I fast, the more I read the Bible, doors open up, favor of the Lord upon me, I'm just walking on water, and I'm just kind of snapping my fingers, and life is a piece of cake. And what I find is actually quite the opposite. The more you get to know Lord, the more you get to know His presence, the more He reveals Himself to you, He starts giving you assignments that are more than you can handle. And He's entrusting you certain affairs in the kingdom of God. And He says, I would like you to do this. 
I'm giving you a privilege to do this and with that comes responsibility and comes a certain weight that we might not always be ready to carry. So I want to take a little bit of an extreme. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that this is what awaits you but I want you to know our forefathers who started following Jesus Christ what they had to encounter and we call them apostles. So just run with me quickly. We're not going to uh, pause here too much because I want to take you somewhere what the Lord laid upon my heart. So how apostles died. So heroes of faith. How they ended their life. How their life was ended. This is a uh, majority of them is not written in the Bible. This is through uh, theologians, history writers and culturally this information is being passed on and they share this information so you can see it on the screen so Andrew Apostle Andrew uh, was killed by crucifixion Bartholomew he was skinned alive and crucified James the Greater beheaded and stabbed with a sword by Herod Agrippa James the Lesser was first Bishop of Jerusalem um, he was thrown through the pinnacle of the te te uh, temple and then later they stoned him. John, we know John is the only one who died a natural death. Jude was martyred and being, by, by being beaten with a club and crucified. <clears throat> Matthew was martyred uh, by being staked and speared to the ground. Simon Peter martyred him by crucifixion at Rome by Nero and he even requested that he would be crucified upside down because he thought he was not worthy to be crucified or die the same death that his Lord died. As we keep going, Philip uh, said to have been tortured, impelled by iron hooks at, by his ankles and hung upside down to die. Simon martyred by crucifixion in Britain. And then history says that he was sawn in half. Thomas martyred, thrust through by the spear in India, and Mark martyred, dragged to death. So a few more, stay with me. Luke was hanged on an olive tree. Matthias was stoned and beheaded in Jerusalem. Apostle Paul, who is known as Saul, was beheaded by emperor. And James thrown some 100 feet off a wall. Um, and then later he was beaten with clubs. Am I missing something? I thought following Jesus Christ was supposed to be driving Mercedes, having nice luxury cars, and, and kind of being blessed. You give $1,000, God will give you 100000 If you give 100000 man, a million's waiting for you. You got this. But when I read the gospel, when I read the cost that one pays of following Jesus Christ, I see an opposite picture. You take any... Uh, any person in the Bible either Old Testament or New Testament you will see that they went quite a bit and it wasn't easy for them like um, you know like uh, having sweets like I have a sweet tooth and I love eating sweets and uh, gospel is not quite like that but I want to address a verse in the Bible that says that many people fall into it and some of the prosperity gospel who preach that God is a blesser, God will bless you. They kind of use this as an example uh, or kind of ground their theology in it. So I want to take this verse and then unpack this a little bit with you. It says, take my yoke upon you, Matthew 11, chapter 11, verses 29 through 30. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Jesus Christ is saying this. And you will find rest for your souls for, and this is the verse, the 30th verse. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, so as I read this verse, as I read this, this scripture, God says that when you follow me, my burden is easy. It's easy. But when I start doing the things that the Bible calls me to of reading the word, being in the prayer, fasting and I start uh, going into ministry and doing the work of the ministry or doing life as a follower of Jesus Christ if I'm a teenager, if I'm at a, kind of in college or you know I'm a young family and I'm following Jesus Christ all of a sudden I get, I get uh, faced with hardships and my message today is being blessed in hardships so 
if I have a hardship, there's certainly meaning that I might attribute to myself and something about me. If I'm facing a hardship in life, then that means something about me. I am not Christian enough. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm weak. And so an enemy starts sending these messages and saying, if you follow Jesus Christ and you have these hardships that you go through, something's wrong with you. There's something that, that a formula is missing that you're not... Uh, kind of achieving to but it's rather simple because you will see a little bit later that God is not lying he is saying that following me the the yoke the gospel itself the relationship with Jesus Christ is easy because when I go into a presence of God I I don't have these you know 100 pound chains that I have to carry or 100 candles that I have to light and repetitiously do this the relationship with Jesus Christ is easy because it's faith-based it's it's easy his yoke is easy but what we encounter is something different that I will address with you through John 16 verses 33 because we can take a verse um, that can answer another verse. I remember Desiree was preaching. She said the way we interpret the Bible is through another scripture. So John 16.33, it says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. But, so, it's a new sentence. It says, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So what Jesus is describing to us or explaining to you and I is that following him, being in the presence of God, uh, kingdom of God principles, they're easy. He doesn't have a lot of performance that you have to do or a lot of things that you have to achieve. It's more of a relationship with him that is based on faith. But what is hard is being a light, being a salt in a world of darkness. Notice where Jesus, when Jesus was persecuted, when he was crucified, it wasn't because uh, angels demanded it or God demanded it. The darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the sinful world did this to Jesus. So whenever we face hardships, majority of our hardships outside of our own thinking or mistakes that we make, it comes from the world that is full of sin. And when I am the light and I encounter something that is dark there's a clash that happens and through this clash comes hardships that I experience in life and if I don't label it appropriately if I don't categorize it appropriately what might happen is I might believe a lie from the enemy that I am doing something wrong or I am not uh, up to par what God has called us so if you look at kind of these two things that Jesus yoke is easier right it's faith-based like I mentioned and living in a world as a believer we encounter hardships it's like when we look in a world of hot and cold right those two don't coexist there's a conflict between those two if I am a child of light if I am the one who carries the presence of God Whenever I enter a belief that someone has that is from the darkness, whenever I encounter presence of spirits, whenever I encounter uh, people who indulge in a sinful lifestyle, there's going to be a conflict. There's going to be a disagreement. And I'm going to suffer and I'm going to have hardships. As we see through the lives of apostles, it's not only the death that they died, but as a lifestyle in general. When we carry the gospel, when we are children of the light, this is, um, I can say, okay, that will follow. Let me list some types of hardships that we encounter. Oppression. Um, we know that enemy lives or exists. There are spirits. We don't see them with our physical eyes, but oppression exists. There's various type of abuse and notice as you look down these kind of columns basically I listed some of the things that we encounter is what we encounter is this uh, kind of maybe uh, depth of sin 
or variety of different sin that exists. And you can go down the list and kind of pick and choose what you have already encountered or maybe what you encounter right now. It could be abuse. It could be spiritual abuse. It could be emotional abuse. It could be a form of addictions, either pornography, either some kind of a, um, with movies or some kind of even drugs. Uh, there's form of addictions that exist. Where do they come from? Who came up with this? Who woos you? Who wants to enslave you? It is this darkness, kingdom of darkness, that has a target on you because you are a child of light and he wants you not to serve Jesus Christ, right? So slandery, mockery, rejection. Have you been in a school setting where you are made fun of, where, where they laugh at you, where they kind of call you names? And you might think to yourself, well, this has nothing to do with Christianity. This is kind of, I'm being betrayed by friends and they're just talking behind my back. Oh, you think so? Have you seen the spiritual world? Have you seen, do you know that they know your name? Do you, they know that you are a child of God? Bible says that there's a sign. Where do you think these pictures came from? Like there's a, a halo, right? Uh, like you look at the, someone holy and they say a halo. Um, and we are marked, we are marked in a spiritual realm as a child of God. If I had an ability right now to turn on a spiritual realm, you would see that those who follow Christ, those who committed themselves to following Jesus Christ in a spiritual realm, they are marked. So enemy knows that you belong to God. Enemy knows that you are a child of God and he uses all the weapons that are available to him to woo you away from loving the Lord. We experience very, various kind of losses. We, we lose loved ones, we lose, we lose friends, we lose certain kind of positions that maybe we have um, in life. I would even argue that majority of the pain that you experience, it comes from um, people who do not carry presence of God in their life. Any kind of pride, any kind of rebellion that, that happens, you are fighting the you are fighting sin you're fighting darkness even when you're disciplining your child and he says no in your face the problem or the issue is not uh, the actual physical labor of uh, washing clothes putting food on the table or some form of care that is not as difficult and there's there's pleasure in it because you're serving but when you encounter with something that doesn't resonate with your soul, something that is tainted with sin, something that is tainted with evil, all of a sudden you start feeling pain, all of a sudden you start feeling all sorts of emotions that come your way. Your way. And you'll see all the other ones kind of like the, the hypocrisy, uh, weapons of the enemy, uh, the name calling the warfare attacks. I want to emphasize that. As a child of God, I want to make it in your mind. I wish you could hear me. I know you hear me, but I wish you could hear me and hear the, what the Holy Spirit will tell you through this message. Is when all these ha things happen, that doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. That doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian. It actually means the opposite. It means that you are being a light. When these things happen to you, when the enemy has attention on you, through loved ones or through your friends and brings you pain and brings pain in your life it's actually an indication that I'm following in the foot of apostles I'm following in the right path because I'm experiencing in this world hardships we face uh, unhealthy parents right not everything that parents do are healthy or okay there's abuse that can happen there's different um, even expressions, how they express themselves is not healthy, is not biblical. And we experience that pain because our soul is not designed to live in contact with, with such, such a behavior. So as you look at this, all I'm trying to do through, the, through this list is just kind of stir your memory or stir uh, kind of the, the things that happened to you that you would remember that, yeah, this happened to me maybe in eighth grade. This happened to me with my best friend. This happened to me when I was uh, doing this job. This betrayal happened and so on. And we experience many, many of these things. So what does God tells us? Through Apostle Paul, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. He, 
he says the following, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us, look into Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. So notice his Apostle Paul is writing this to Timothy. Um, previous verse, I apologize, so in, this, is, this is to Hebrews. Uh, so when, when they were writing this, he's, he's saying that whatever you go through, basically he's just saying, it is okay. I just picture them having coffee, right? Apostle Paul is sitting down with some maybe uh, his friends who are in ministry and says, what you're going through, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. I went through the same thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? What the issue is, sometimes we might want to have a desire based on prosperity gospel teaching, based on easy way out or kind of this uh, a, a wide path, is that I should not have this in my life. And when I do encounter this, I start asking myself, I, I start asking and questioning, is this for me? Is this okay? Should I have this in my life? And God is reminding you today, through the Holy Spirit, God is tugging on your heart and, he, and He's saying, my son, my daughter, it's okay. I'm developing endurance within you. I'm developing a muscle. Whenever you go and exercise, I'm developing this muscle within you. How to live in the presence of wickedness. How to live in the presence of evil. How to live in the presence of rebellion. What, what is your role? And I called you to be the light. As we close to... And we, as we approach the, uh, celebrating our moms next Sunday, um, I just kind of picture a life of a mom, right? How much evil or how much um, she encounters as far as uh, endurance and as far as hardships that she, re she, that she faces. So think about this. She wakes up in the morning. She needs to make breakfast. She tells a child, do this, do that. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have a, a mind of their own. Throughout the day, she needs to go through various things um, and kind of keep things in order. She also has a heart. She also has emotions. She has a mind. And enemy oppresses her in her mind and, she, and, and says, you are not a good mother. If you were a good mother, everything would be in order. Your kids would obey you. They would sit quietly. They would fold their hands. And they would say, yes, mom, yes, ma'am, how can I help you? What can I do for you, right? And the enemy is painting this picture. This is what motherhood is. And when, when she compares to her life of being under, uh, kind of being under pressure, she says, yeah, this is, doesn't align. Well, I'm here today to tell you that it is okay. In fact, the children that you have are not yours. Did you know that? The children that you have are not yours. God entrusted you, your children. Because he knew that you would be a perfect mom for this child. So he gave this child into your life. He gave these children into your life to care and to bring up in the Lord and in the teachings of the Lord. And when they go through life and they encounter different shades of darkness, uh, as a mom, as a dad, you are there a light to guide a path for, for them and say, my son, this is not okay. God says, the word of God says to do this and not to do that. Um, this is when you go and, and you fast. You say, okay, my child is do, doing this or my sibling is doing that. Um, and God is laying upon your heart, I, I called you to be the light. You start interceding, you, you go into intercession and you start opposing the evil. You start opposing the things that are not of, of God. Matthew 5, 11, it says, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So this is where the blessing comes in. God says that when you carry this weight, when you carry this responsibility to be the light, whether it's at work, you might be marginalized. You might not get promoted uh, for certain things because you speak against their jokes or you speak or you don't partake and they're sort of you don't 
fit the, the group so they maybe marginalize you. God says that when this happens to you, you are blessed. You are blessed because you carry the light of the world. You carry the presence of God. You carry the kingdom of God wherever you go. So if they don't like you, if they mis mistreat you, if they call you names, no matter who that is, do you know that enemy wounds us especially? Enemy wounds us especially from our loved ones. Did you know that enemy can use our loved ones to poke at us? God called you to be the light regardless of what happens to you. So C.S. Lewis said the following. He said, hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. Let me read it again. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. I love that quote because from my experience and I'm sure from your experience you experience more hardship being in this world than kind of these highs with the Lord you experience more day-to-day -day routine day-to-day -day responsibility day-to-day -day weight that you carry as a sister as a brother as a friend as a mom as a dad as a sister in Christ as a brother in Christ God puts this mental on you mental of responsibility a weight that you carry carrying the presence of the Lord ushering his presence whether it's at work whether to your children whether to your grandchildren and God is entrusting you to be the light of the world what a privilege is it is I'm just thankful to God that we have this privilege of being the light and my prayer is God give me purity give me purity of my vessel inside of me that I can carry this that I can carry the presence of God and God says those who want to live a righteous life those who love the Lord those who pursue the Lord they're going to be persecuted they're going to be, there's going to be an opposition you are not going to uh, enjoy Christianity in a way that it is presented in some of the areas here at the western western culture so let's kind of jump into this closing um, and we're, we're going to go to prayer so Genesis 29 20 it says so Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because the love he had for her because of the love he had for her so kind of stay with me as I jump back to the Old Testament this story is very interesting to me because uh, Jacob came to Laban and uh, father of Rachel and he loved her and he said um, that he wants to marry her and her dad said yeah that's fine I would love that why don't you work seven years for me and then uh, once you work off seven years then you can get married you know the story I'm sure you read the Bible you know the story that after seven years uh, they made a celebration and he goes to bed he wakes up and guess who's next to him it's not Rachel it's Leah and he's like what's going on I we made arrangements <laughs> I was supposed to marry Rachel now I have Leah here um, well so kind of he was being sly but kind of what happened is he said yeah you let's finish out the week of uh, kind of the wedding feast and then uh, you can have uh, Rachel as your wife but you got to work seven more years for me right so and you know the whole story what I'm trying to say is for Jacob these seven years seem just like a few days I don't know what kind of work you do but if you had to do seven years of work whether it's driving whether it's doing manual labor or programming or in healthcare whatever it is I don't know it doesn't matter what you do seven years is a long time seven years is a long time but he said that they were just a few days why because he loved Rachel so what I see kind of if I can take this story and relate it to our day-to-day -day living is we love presence of the Lord we love God we love fellowship we love kingdom work and 
for us to do any kind of ministry, when you face people who kind of serve the Lord, who follow the Lord, it is not hard. His yoke is easy. Why? Because we love Him. We love their relationship. But being in this world, kind of, it comes, it comes with a package, right? Just like Jacob had Leah, it comes with a package that we have to do the things of the world. Uh, we can't get away. We can't just sit with the guitar and say, Kumbaya, my Lord, and just sing, sing all day. There, there, there has to be uh, a journey that we walk out of the things that we don't like to do. We know that Jacob's heart wasn't for Leah. He wasn't uh, kind of, his heart wasn't very much open. But uh, God calls us to do the things that we have to do, the things that we must do and labor for him, carrying the mental, carrying the presence of the Lord. So that's why I'm addressing the myth. The myth is that following Jesus Christ is easy. It is a piece of cake. It's you're going you're gonna to walk in the sunset and you're going to enjoy it. It's a myth that the enemy is sending in your mind. Jesus Christ is saying that follow me. Follow me. I am easy to relate to. I am easy to tell you the principles of the kingdom. That is easy. You, I'm not going to burden you with a lot. But in, the, in this world, you're going to have hardships. So what I want to do is I just want to normalize that as a child of God, when you face hardships, when you face difficult situations, when you face things that you don't understand, just accept and say, Lord, I do this for you because I love you. I, do, I, I raise my children. I get up in the morning and I pray over my children. I fast for my children. I, I, I disciple them. I teach them. I train them. Um, I talk to my brother. I take him out on a coffee because he, he went um, and kind of started doing things not of the Lord. So I meet up with this guy and say, brother, this is not the way of the Lord. You have to follow the Lord. This is the way of the Lord. Or maybe I talk to a grandson or, or granddaughter or even to a parent. And I address the things that are not okay because we are facing evil, because we are facing darkness and hardships that are in, that are in, in my life and in your life. Would you stand with me? As we pray, I just want to invite you and um, ask you to review your life. Are there areas in your life that enemy has lied to you? And maybe the enemy said you're a bad dad or enemy said you're a bad mom or he said you're a bad child because you do X, Y, and Z. Today I'm reminding you as a, as a, as a child of God, as a minister, I'm reminding you that God is pleased with you. Do you hear this? God is pleased with you because you said yes to the Lord. You said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Yes, Lord, I will carry the responsibility. Yes, Lord, I will carry the weight. I will carry this burden that you put on, upon my life. If I have to face any kind of challenges, if I have to face any kind of persecution, any kind of slander, any kind of uh, 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 maybe shades of the enemy, that is okay. That is okay because his yoke is easy. His love is easy. His relationship with me is easy. And the burden is not heavy for me to be in the presence of the Lord. But what is hard, what is challenging is being in a world that is full of sin. But God says, take, be, be strong because I have overcome the world. God wants to empower you today. That's why we do communion. That's why we do uh, services. So we are encouraged and we are strengthened to do the work of the Lord that he called you no matter what role you play in a family uh, within your life or at a church. God is with you. God is with you. Be strong. God is with you. Enemy doesn't like you. That's why you experience a lot of hardships. But say that's okay because I love the one who loved me. Let's pray. Father, we come to you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I come to you right now and I bless you, Jesus. I bless you as we're going to go into worship, Father, as we're going to worship your name again, Lord Jesus. I love the fact that you have died for us, Lord. You have died for us, Father. You have died for us. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be crucified. And as he was here, he was slandered. He was beaten, Father. He was uh, mistreated, 
by those who were supposed to be on his side but Lord Jesus he was breaking through the darkness even the his family his own mom often didn't understand him but you have called us Jesus to be the light you have called us to represent you well here on earth and we we have challenges Lord Jesus we have sometimes these messages that we say that people tell us that hey uh, Christianity is easy following Jesus Christ is easy and and you shouldn't have any kind of hardships you, sh you shouldn't have any kind of challenges that come your way an enemy is lying to your children God he's lying he's saying you're not a good mother he's saying you're not a good father you're not a good child of God you're not a, a good a good uh, a good sibling or a good friend an enemy is a liar and he slanders and he slanders and he lies father and I am I'm desiring today and I pray Lord Jesus that you would encourage my brothers and my sisters and my friends to walk in your presence Lord Jesus to walk out there calling no matter what awaits us father we don't know what to expect in this country we don't know any uh, Lord Jesus any any uh, government or any rules that are being taken place or any plans that are being taken um, in behind behind uh, kind of uh, the lines that we don't understand but I know Lord Jesus that Daniel that Daniel when he heard that there came out a law that you cannot pray as usual he opened the window towards Jerusalem and he bowed and he prayed hallelujah father no matter what circumstances we face I ask you right now that you will bless every child in this place that you will bless everybody who's in this place Lord Jesus as they follow you as enemy throws darts at them as they face misunderstandings as they face any kind of oppression from the enemy on, on the mind level father if they go through any kind of sorrow Lord Jesus when they hear about evil that is happening in the world and they feel sad and it torments their hearts Lord Jesus you said we are blessed this is more than a bumper sticker Lord Jesus this is us living out following Jesus and when disciples a certain number of disciples they departed you turned and you said would you like to depart as well father help us not to depart from you when we face evil help us not to depart from you when we face hardships hallelujah father how much hardships do we go through raising children how much hardships do we go through just living out a Christian life staying away from perversion staying away from lies from cheating the system and we don't join in that because you called us to be the light father as we go into worship I ask you that you would tell us remind us of your love for us just like Jacob loved Rachel we do have to do these mundane things day to day they don't go away Lord but I ask you that you would increase the love that we have for you increase the love that we have for you that when hardships come we say that's okay because I love the one who loved me and I can endure it in the name of Jesus and I am blessed I am blessed in the hardships that I carry that I do in the name of the Lord my Savior and my lover hallelujah